And we're back in the room, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to the Cayman Show. Joining me today, a treat for you as always, from the gift that keeps on giving, that is, in fact, the Cayman Show. He is an actor, a voiceover artist, an award-winning audio drama creator, a producer and sound designer. Give it up for my friend, your friend also now, Shane Salk. Welcome to the show. Great to have you here at last. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Good man. Where are you coming to us from today, my friend? I'm in North Hollywood, California, in the U.S. of A. Oh, you poor man. My heart bleeds for you. <laughs> I know. I was going to say, they're going to take one of our letters at one of these points just to punish us. <laughs> Fantastic. And how's the weather over there today? A damn sight better than you, no doubt. Uh, it's, it's the sun's still coming up, so I'll get back to you on that one. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Excellent. Well, Great to have you. Obviously, as, as explained off the air, we had a bit of a hiccup for which we won't go into details uh, <laughs> last week when you were meant to come home. Uh, so, uh, come on and come home. Uh, but now, obviously, we've got you here. So fantastic. So let, let's just talk a little about you. So first of all, I guess, what's going on in the world of uh, Shane Salk at the moment? I had my apartment cleaned yesterday. I'm very excited about that. <laughs> uh, I have coffee here. I'm assuming that's what you're talking about. The very minimal things. I cooked a bunch of chicken the other day. Um, you know, the exciting things. Excellent. Hey, that's that's what it's all about. So obviously it's been a been a tough time uh for us all the last year and a half. Uh mm -hmm. well, cut it's longer than that now, I guess. But for yourself then, obviously in in your your trade, shall we say. Uh, how have things been for you in lockdown? Have you managed to, to keep busy? A lot of people I've spoken to have managed to, to get creative and use things to their advantage. How, how's it been for yourself? Uh, it's been interesting. Um, I started, so I run a, a recording studio in, in North Hollywood, and I started this studio less than a year before all the lockdowns and all the shutdowns started. Okay. So starting a business uh, where people come into a building and then trying to establish that and then making it impossible for people to come into a building was a bit rough. Um, but so I, I, like you were saying, I, I produce audio dramas and audio, I call them audio series. Um, we were in the middle of producing one. So fortunately I was able to pivot the, the business, the recording, the you know rental business to do a lot of remote recordings for people. Mm. And then through that, for that first year and everything, I we were producing Carcerum, which is the, our audio series. Our yeah, I'm audio. familiar. And uh, that took up all of our time. So anytime we had to, we were just producing that. So I was be able to stay busy, but it became me in a dark room for about a year because you couldn't see anybody anyway. <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> oh, so... So we stayed busy, but it was definitely a, felt like a troll under a bridge a lot of the time. Yeah, yeah, I dare say. I uh, again, I can totally relate, man. I've been uh, stuck in this little uh, <laughs> little dark spot for a little over a year myself now, and uh, yeah, we some good things have come out of it. You know, I'm meeting good people like yourself, but uh, you know, I'd rather be out there. I'm uh, an extrovert somewhat. You know, I, I like to be out there in the thick of things, but uh, but we do what we can and we get creative with the disastrous situations that are dealt to us, you know? And the amount of art that that we did see and that will come out of this year, I think is going to be incredible just because you have so many people who, I mean, it's so funny because, you know, as, as an artist, as, as a creator, a lot of people say, well, if I just had the time, if I just like didn't have to go to work, if I didn't have to, and then there's the year and you really find out, you're like, oh, <laughs> that's a lot of time that I, I can't my brain you know emotionally I can't do this right now um but I think we're gonna see and I think we have seen a lot of development for people going okay well let me see what I can create in this time with by myself with other people remotely I mean we also do uh when when uh you know quarantine just started we're very extroverted people here we usually have people around all the time um, even just stopping by the studio, but we couldn't have that. So mm. we were, well, how do we keep ourselves entertained? How do we keep ourselves happy? And we started doing live game shows on Fridays. Awesome. Just 
because I wanted to figure out if we could figure out how to do it. And we have these, you know, they're all produced and designed and people really looked forward to that stuff. And it wouldn't really have happened the way it did if it wasn't for all the shutdown and the lockdowns because it, it became a necessity for us. Definitely, definitely. Same here with this. Um, so, so I didn't own a podcast in microphone before lockdown. You know, I wa- wasn't into this at all. I just needed living on my own, uh, being used to being among friends, brothers, good people of the world, pretty much 24-7 before lockdown, uh, and then subjected to those four walls and a roof where it's just me, myself, and my pet cockatiel, you know, it's uh, it's quite a test in time. So, yeah, the creative juices started flowing there. The guitar got picked up again. Songwriting yeah. recommenced. Nice. And, uh, yeah, I became a, a YouTuber stroke podcaster as well. So uh, here we are. Sorry, I just noticed the heavyweight champion. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, that there, I'm a pro wrestler as well. So uh, that's the, the Celtic Wrestling Heavyweight Championship. Uh, Celtic Wrestling is a wrestling promotion that I created in 2005. Uh, it's now defunct. It's not running anymore. But that's the that's the championship that uh, so many people have worn. Uh, it's, yeah, it's quality. It's, it's been worn by um, an American wrestler as well. He's no longer with us. It goes by the name of Tracy Smothers. Uh, he's wore that title as well. He's from uh, like Memphis, Tennessee sort of area. But uh I know Tennessee. I was just out there. For yeah, a- oh, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, that's very cool. Yeah. Uh, if you could figure out how to do wrestling virtually, you would have something there. Yeah, that's a that's a different kettle of fish, I think. A different story, you know. But where there's a will, there's a way. Watch this space, Shane. You never know. But uh, yeah. I'm wrestling, I'm wrestling again this Saturday. It's my first match since uh, 2000 and 18 so it's the big comeback you know i i've retired several times but i'm wrestling for pro wrestling carnage on saturday uh hopefully i'll be able to bag another belt to display just about there that'd be nice wouldn't it please and <laughs> and say mean things to like throw them off that's all i got absolutely hey that's what i'm good at man that's what i'm good yeah. at <laughs> anyway enough about me this is about you you're the right. focus point yeah so uh Let's let's talk about your journey in life then. So, firstly, I guess, how, where, when, and why did you get into the the world of of acting, voiceovers, theater, etc.? When did that begin? Well, I I did acting as a, not professionally. Uh, I wasn't like a child actor in terms of you know movies and things mm. like that. I was I was acting in school and and things from a very very young age, and I really really liked it. My my goal in life as I remember as, as far back as I can go, people were like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, taller. <laughs> I was a jerk as a kid. Um, but then I would say I'd either want to be an actor or a soccer player. And uh, that's what I did. I played soccer for a very, very or football as, uh, as, it, as it may be, um, for a very, very long time. And then uh, I actually, I went to college for uh, acting and I kind of was like, well, I got to pick one of them right now because I don't have time for both. Mm. Um, and my my college didn't have, you know, it wasn't a big soccer. It wasn't a big sports school or anything. So, yeah. Um, so that I, I went to school for uh, theater, for theater performance. And even before that in high school, one of my biggest things was the more I know about everything, the better I am at anything. Um, so I did theater tech and and uh you know organization and and i ran i helped us move into a new theater and learned all that stuff so in college i did the same thing i I have a bachelor of fine arts in theater performance but i also did technical theater and did lighting design and 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 all these things so when i got out um i graduated in 2008 and 2008 in the u.s was a rough year because um we were in the middle of another recession and yeah, i think we we were the same over here yeah. around the same time i believe yeah yeah i i um so couldn't find a job couldn't you know i couldn't get terrible jobs um but you know survived and um but during that whole time i 
I, I don't do well when I'm just sitting around waiting for somebody else to do something for me mm. or give me a job or something like that. So started producing um, at the time, a friend of mine and I started producing a, a uh, audio drama called we're alive. And we did that for a number of years. And, and that was sort of before podcasting really became a, a thing. Absolute is today, but you know, 20% of people knew what a podcast was or never heard of a podcast at the time now so many people have them but um and so i mean i've done theater i've done film um i got into the voiceover because i listened to old time radio growing up and i really really enjoyed it and i always kind of was like oh when i grow up i'll make one of these or something like mm. that and opportunities came and and i just have rolled with it a lot i mean i've i've still produced i've produced short films and and written pilots and written features and stuff like that but um it's a it's a whole different ball game and it really is the wild west so i get to use my love of all of this stuff and use my knowledge from these shows growing up and really just do what i want i don't i don't sit around and think of well you know what did somebody else do or you know logically why would this is the only way to do it i, I can do whatever i want that's the way um you spoke about we were alive there um huh? wasn't that an award winner as well yes it tell us about that a number of awards it was a, it's a zombie serialized show um zombie apocalypse in los angeles california get hits worldwide and everything but it's just all of these things i'm not really a genre specific creator and no matter what genre i work in um all of the stories come down to the characters and the relationship with the characters mm. so uh one of the things that i love is when people say like oh i'm not really into fantasy or zombies and i go great listen to it anyway and they go you know i wasn't really into this genre but i really love this show and i go that's because it's not really about the genre that's right is uh just it it's the um obstacles that the characters have to overcome but at the end of the day it's really about the for me it's about the characters and the relationships um but again that was back back in the day and I, we had just graduated college and so we got to try everything we got to do everything and and i was able to create these you know soundscapes and and we were able to create these worlds and i can sit there and go okay well we need more of this we need more of that what out here makes sounds what makes sounds here and because there wasn't a lot of stuff like this and podcasting um people uh, i was able to you know advertise and not advertise but you know promote it and things like that and and then it got really popular um and there was there's not as much noise back then there mm. wasn't you know, and there wasn't big companies that were just throwing millions of dollars at advertising for other stuff so it was a very different world so it's been very interesting to be part of podcasting from you know near the beginning to now and see how the world changes and and talk to people about <laughs> that absolutely i think i think for myself i very almost missed the boat you know but uh I, i've managed to find a seat now and i'm quite comfortable in it and uh we, we're sailing smooth at the moment so uh so that's good stuff uh yeah you mentioned the genres earlier on yeah you you're right about that people do often have the perception of oh i don't like zombies or i don't like period dramas or whatever you know the two two examples for me would be um the walking dead you know, it's a show, you think, oh, it's a zombie show, oh, I'm not into zombies, but it's more about how people's perceptions of life change, how people's morals change and things like that. There's more to it than a load of zombies going around eating everyone, you know? So, uh, yeah, people need to, to look sometimes at the bigger picture. Same with Game of Thrones. Yeah. Um, I'm not a, not a fan of, you know, you know, period stuff myself. And for Game of Thrones, everyone was watching it. Everyone was all over social media saying how awesome last night's episode was. I think I jumped on board on season five then. I, I started, they were in season five. I started on season one and I was hooked, you know? It's just like, all oh, right. Once you get past the genre and see what's really going on, it makes a hell of a difference. And then it's, uh, it's somewhat like opium. It's addictive as hell, you know? 
Well, and I will say that that there's a difference between like a movie, like a one-off, like a one-hour, two-hour thing versus a whole series. Yeah. Because a one- or two-hour thing, you could just lean on genre. And there are a lot of things and people that do, which is why it kind of gets that reputation. You're like, well, mm-hmm. I get it. It's a zombie movie. These are the things that are going to happen. Um, but... Uh, again there's different kinds of different kinds of storytellers different kinds of creators and and me i'm always interested in what how the characters are reacting to each other responding like you're saying growing and relating Mm. um and i think that makes interesting story more than uh just the technology or or the the gimmick of something definitely Um, you can combine the two i think simon Pegg does this really really well actually because it really comes down to the characters of you know when you do comedy it within a genre that's not technically really comedy centric um that's what it comes down to is those characters and the relationships and that's where the heart is that's why you know um uh you know even the silent silent movie stars that come down to that that's why charlie chaplin was an amazing storyteller oh what a legend yeah absolutely (laughs) just because he could take comedy and make you cry because it's about the relationships and how the characters feel about each other and their situations and how they feel about each other and then how the audience feels about what's happening instead of the rat falls and it's the difference between charlie chaplin and the three stooges for me absolutely at their place but a lot of it is uh you know slapstick which Mm. is great but um, there's a difference to me 100 percent, man 100 percent. talking of talking of characters uh did you know work on the disney cruise lines as well i did um, i've uh, been uh, reading up a little on you and one of your favorites one of your favorite roles was uh in a performance of aladdin uh were yeah. you the genie in aladdin i was the genie in aladdin for for uh for disney it was uh, a lot of blue makeup. Awesome. <laughs> what did what did you enjoy about that role, then, Shane? I mean, so here's the thing: the the cruise I was on was it was the Disney Fantasy, and it was the first time that it was the new ship. We were the first cast to ever do this show on that ship. They built it in Germany, and I flew out to Germany, and we were rehearsing there. And uh, the experience of just being on a ship that's still being built was really cool and really epic and we got through to go do all these um you know the christening ceremony and everything like that the experience of being the genie which i mean aladdin was one of my favorite disney movies growing up yeah it's a classic a lot of people and i remember the first day of rehearsal the director said you know, we're sitting, we're, we're sitting down after I got cast. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I got cast. This is <laughs> incredible. And he goes, so just so you know, we don't expect you to be, you know, be Robin Williams. We kind of figure out who you are as, you know, because who can be Robin Williams and all these things. And I go, with all due respect, I'm going to do my best to be that. It's, I think that, you know, they don't all, because Robin Williams is such a, singular person Hmm. you know you can't expect people to come in and go well i'm gonna be this character um but at the sort of like what we were talking about the heart of the character of the genie is a vaudevillian performer who um just loves doing what he's doing and and pulls from all these random places of his brain to tell these jokes to interact with people and um, you know, sort of uh, survive the sadness of what his life is. Stuck in a lamp, all mm. these things. And then once he gets free, he, you know, he's still this this person. And, you know, one of the things about that character is he starts out one way and he's like, I'm guarded. And then he really falls for this kid, you know, as in like oh my god we're friends and and i'm done being betrayed and then he gets betrayed again Mm, the god is down then yeah it's a very sad character uh if you think about it that way and i 
I like going deep into those characters, which are kind of like, oh, this is just a surface character. It's like, he just does silly things, tells jokes and all these things. I'm like, no, it's so much deeper than that. And to be able to create this character and create the show, be part of the creation of the show that's still going on, um, because I was the first one to be on the ship. I mean, they, they put sound cues and light cues in the show because of jokes that I came up with that are still going on because they built them into the show. Awesome. What a compliment. Yeah. Um, it was, it was, you know, it's, it's so few people in the world get that experience. And I could not have been more proud to, I mean, I remember auditioning for it and just going, there's no way I'm going to get this. I'm not a 35 year old fat guy. I was 20. <laughs> time and i'm like there's no way and then callback and then i was in that callback for two hours and you know all of this stuff and it was just i it was just such an epic experience and there were it's so funny because there there are people that you know they see facebook and stuff and they're like oh my god it looks like it's just a party all the time on this cruise ship mm. and they, you know that's because nobody's posting that when we're lying on the floor almost crying because we've been in rehearsal <laughs> for 15 hours nobody wants to post that on facebook no and, no nobody sees the glamour uh, today, you know behind the scenes exactly but hey man i wouldn't change it because it was it was such a cool experience fantastic experience man it must be an honor to be a part of that um so to, to talk to the genie then so just just for argument's sake just to just to put it out there and just I to play you, I <laughs> <argue> you. you <laughs> well well let's not argue let's not argue just a, I, i'm giving you a gift you all right Shane? i'm giving you a gift say outside of the box you know say i was the genie all right so this is where i'm going to tap into your mind now i'm the genie i'm about to grant you three wishes okay but you're not allowed to wish for money and you're not allowed to wish for more wishes so if I could grant you three wishes now, what would you wish for? Putting you on the spot. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Don't feel the pressure. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> okay, so I'm, and I'm also not going to wish for social issues to be fixed because that seems a little, uh, that's what I would probably think about a lot more is, is going, well, let's just get rid of racism. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll be honest with you. Mine would probably be uh, world peace, end to poverty. Uh, uh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe constant sunshine. Is that allowed? You know, because I, I live in Wales and it's never sunny. I'm from Seattle. Which oh, you're is okay. Wales of, I mean, I'm from Seattle. I live in LA. I, I love the rain. Yeah. I love the rain. Well, in Los Angeles, we don't get it a lot. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I grew up in Seattle, so when it doesn't rain, I feel like I dry out. And I'm like, <laughs> I had an argument with a friend in college. He's like, it was, I went to, in Southern California, and it was like 80 degrees most of the time. And I'm like, oh, God. And it was raining one day, and he comes in, he goes, Shane, I don't know how you live in Seattle. Like, days like this, it's raining, it's overcast. I don't want to do anything. I go, dude, I will save the world if it's raining. When it's hot, <laughs> I'm not moving. I hate it. Um, <laughs> That's crazy. My girlfriend's like, like you. She's like, oh, I love the rain. I love the snow. I love the dark nights. It's like, yeah. it's, uh, are you crazy? What, what's going on? I, I love the sun. I love having to every every few moments, having to run into the water to cool off. I, I love that, you know? It's, here's, it's, here's an interesting thought about that, though, is because when I moved from Seattle to, to, L, uh, to Southern California, and mm. after about two or three months, I was, I was getting really depressed a lot and couldn't figure it out. And I talked to some other friends of mine who were from Seattle and we had moved for college and, stuff, and they were all sort of having the same thing. And I, we realized in Seattle when it was sunny, it was like, okay, so this is what we're going to do today. We're going to mm. go out we're gonna do these things because we know it's going to go, you know, it's going to rain and get overcast and all that stuff and get cooled down and whatever. So our brains were like, well, it's sunny now. You have to be happy. <laughs> and when there was like no break from it, our brains are like, well, I don't know when we're supposed, <laughs> supposed to feel. What? No, we have to suppress everything. And so, you know, three months later, you're like, I'm, I've been miserable. <laughs> so that was just an interesting thing. Um, 
I don't know. How did we get on that? Oh, wishes. Three wishes. Three wishes. Um, hmm. Well, uh, the first thing that comes to mind, I mean, they're, they're the selfish things like, you know, I'd, I'd like our studio to, to get a, a bigger building so we can make more things and things like that. But one of the things that I wish um, is that the amount of work that independent artists and producers do um, wouldn't get overshadowed by bigger companies. Mm. And, and one of the things that I really dislike, and I can't fault anybody for this. It's not like a, like, well, if they just stop, this would be better because it's, it's not a, it's not a bad thing. It's just a hurdle. And I'm like, ah, oh, this hurdle is so hard is that, um, you know, like the distribution companies, the platforms, iHeartRadio, all these things, um, they are able to promote their own stuff because they make it and they have the platforms. Um, I wish that people could recognize the work that goes into a project um, and based on the percentage, like the money that this person has, the work that this person has and the, the lack of support they have and still see this amazing product that comes out of it. Yeah. Um, that, that's something, cause I have, you know, I have very talented friends and, and uh, you know, a lot of it comes down to things you can't control. Mm, um, yeah. So, and, so you're saying you, you want people to be recognized for their talent, not for the, the bells and whistles they've got swinging around them. Yeah. This, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's sort of like, oh, did you ever see the movie Shallow Hal? Yes. It's like Shallow Hal, but for artists. Right, okay, yeah. Look at it, they're like, oh, this is a very attractive piece of art. Uh, but it could look like a fat guy. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> do, do you want me to press you for the other two wishes, or would you like me to move on? <laughs> uh, that could I be a wish. whole other podcast if you want it. <laughs> wish that everybody would listen to car serum and tell their friends fantastic and i wish that i i wish that this uh i've been struggling with i wish that technology would work the way that it's supposed to all the time yeah if only eh? if only <laughs> i i put a lot of things we put together here on sort of like um, I take technology and I go, well, this is what I need it to do. And I find a way for it to do that because like for the game shows, we're yeah. running full game shows, but it's just one person running it. <laughs> I've called people and go, well, this is what I need to do. And goes, well, and then they'll start being like, well, this is how you do it. I go, yeah, I can't do that. He goes, well, what's your setup over there? You got three people running the show. And I'm like, You're, no, one person running the show. Why are <laughs> but I'll, I will, <laughs> I've been going through this for a week. I, I got this new piece of technology that's not designed for this, but I'm like, oh, this is how I can make it do the thing. And then I'm like, it's all set up. And then it's like, oh, but the, this part of it doesn't work. And nobody knows why. I'm like, but it's supposed to. Like, yeah, it's supposed to. We don't know why it's not. So I do another workaround. I'm like, great, it's all working. And they're like, well, yeah, but this part of it's not working. I'm like, but why? And it's like, there's no reason. We don't know. I don't know. It's just, just, just because. <laughs> Because there's a, a dash in some line of coding. Oh, my God. You're quite passionate about that wish as well. Ah, I'll take that one over the world. <laughs> That's cool, man. That's cool. I can, I can so relate. I, I wish my emails weren't getting clogged up in my inbox. I guess this comes down to technology as well. There's obviously a reason it's happening, but it's a reason beyond my little mind's vision, you know? So... Um, you've, you've mentioned Carcium then. Do you want to talk a little about that? Do you want to tell everyone the concept behind it, what it's all about for those who may not know? Yeah, so Carcium is, a, is an epic fantasy, fantasy audio series. It's kind of a mix between Game of Thrones and Princess Bride. Um, full cast, full sound effects. Uh, we have 120 characters in the first season, I think. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, original, uh, original music. Um, I'm very tired because it took a lot of work and we don't, <laughs> you know, like I said earlier, we were in shutdown. So we don't have, we didn't have a massive team, you know, we, it was funny. There's a documentary on, on uh, 
Disney Plus or something on the making of Frozen 2. Mm. And we watched this, me and my partner Bill watched this uh, completely separately. Um, and we're both like, this is this is what we're doing. We just don't have 13 <laughs> people to help. And there's no animation. But other than that, this is exactly what we're doing. No wonder we're so tired. <laughs> um, so it's... Uh, yeah, it's this, this epic fantasy thing. Um, there's a, a land of a Rue used to be happy and plentiful and, and all these things. Um, and they were these, uh, according to legend, there were these uh, beings called guardians who were magic and then, you know, sort of protected the land and mm. kept things peaceful. And then all of a sudden they disappeared. Um And that's sort of we, where we come in is, you know, 80 years after where, we have uh, some, you know, characters who are uh, uh, like, well, this land sucks. And we've heard about these guardians. We don't know if they're real or not, but there's this prophecy that's been passed down um, and says that if you can find the one, the one that will bring everybody, the you know, bring back a route to this land of happy people, um, then it'll be back. Um, and so they're into that um there are magic has been basically banned from the whole the whole land there are these vigils these vigilantes um state run sort of thing who literally will go search out magic and just destroy it um magic shows up in kids uh, at a young age and there's no rhyme or reason to why magic is one one person's magic but somebody else is not but when the kid shows magic, these guys show up and just grab them and take them and you never see that kid again. So Jeez. it's a pretty rough place. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we, we, have, uh, we have these people we follow around and they just want to make things better. Excellent stuff, man. Excellent. So, so where can people tap into this? Where can people find this and find out any, more about it? Any place that you have your podcast, you can go find Carcerum. That's C-A-R-C-E-R-E-M. Um, you can also go to carcerumtheseries.com and we have uh, we have actors like Jane Lynch, uh, Neil Flynn from, he was the janitor on Scrubs and he was the father in the middle. Um, Cameron Crowe makes an appearance, the, the famed director. Um, and if you're into animation, Pinky and the Brain are both in it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Maurice LaMarche and Rob Paulson. They don't do those, those voices, but they're in it. Uh, Bob Birkin, who's Porky Pig and a hundred other things is in it. Gray Griffin, who is one of my favorite people. She's uh, the every voice of your childhood. She was Daphne and Scooby-Doo. She's Wonder Woman. She's uh, everything else. Uh, all these people are in it just because they loved this project so much that it's not that we had a lot of money to pay them because we didn't. <laughs> partner's known a lot of these people for for a number of years because he's been in the voiceover industry for 40 years yeah uh, and they knew my work from from different things and so a lot of people are just like yeah i'd love to be part of this this is great well, that's incredible that's an incredible cast that's like my childhood cast literally yeah. coming back you know that was fantastic richard horovitz who was uh he's invader zim yeah uh, angry beavers um we have three different ninja turtles in it robbie wrist who was the voice of the one of the live action ninja turtles in the movies rob paulson uh has been two different ninja, ninja turtles um uh townsend coleman who was the original voice of the tick and right. another ninja turtle and actually pat fraley who was not a ninja turtle but he was crank he right was, okay oh crank yeah crikey i was a huge ninja turtle person i'm like <laughs> me well, too I man we got here but I, I used to draw ninja turtles all over my wardrobes and everything and i got grounded by my parents for doing so as well you know but, uh, worth it worth it well worth it absolutely <laughs> turtle power the song as well i think it was number one for about six weeks over here in the uk and it was knocked off i believe by the Bartman. <laughs> 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 or was it was it the Batman or was it Chesney Hawks? I'm not sure. One or the other, you know. But uh, yeah, yeah, good days, good days. Um, oh, I, I, God, I, I've totally lost where I am now. I've uh, we've just got lost in Ninja in Turtles. Wales, you think? <laughs> I'm in LA. <laughs> oh, there we are. Yeah, I'm in Wales. Yeah, I got it now. I got it. I found myself again. So yeah. you know, we, we'll pop the the links for that. 
they, into the, the video and the audio descriptions as well for you. Yeah. Find um, us on media and all that stuff. But what I was going to say is that we actually have a lot of behind the scenes interviews with a lot of these people we just talked about and mentioned. So you can find those on YouTube and they're really cool to watch just because we just ask some questions about about uh, being part of the show and things like that. And uh, and it's fun. It's fun to see <laughs> what they have to say, because I actually we had, you know, somebody else interviewed them. So we weren't actually in the room yeah. when they were interviewed. So I have no idea what they were going to what they say until they come out. And I'm like, oh, they enjoyed themselves. That's, that's fantastic. Great. That's brilliant, man. That's awesome. Well done. That's that's great. I love it. Well, if, if you could, after this, if you could just bombard me with a load of links, I'll obviously I'll sure. chuck them in for you then as well. And that'll, that'll be great. Hopefully get a bit more traffic there for you. So that's great. Um, so aside from that, what other projects are you involved in at the moment? Is uh, Are you focused strictly on that at the moment or? I mean, that's the, that's definitely the main one uh, promotion and, and uh, getting, getting people that, I mean, there's 10 hours, 10 plus hours of content of storyline in the first season. Um, we you know we we have little things here and there for the second season we do have a second series that we're working on mm. uh little bits here and there um that we're in development for but uh you know between prom- cursor nearly it was so much work that we definitely need to have a better we need a bigger budget mm. <laughs> hopefully if we can do a season two just because uh, a bigger team because it 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 nearly destroyed me uh, <laughs> because of of the quality of content um and, and a bunch of other things that it, it it's it is more it was more epic than anything i i done to date yeah um, i mean i've done you know we did we're alive i did we're alive we did a version of a christmas carol like all these other things but it it car serum is a step above it really is a, an immersive experience and and we have a lot of plans for that to continue and um i'm i'm trying to work with the the visually impaired community because it's basically entertainment designed for them because there are no visuals so that's it's a cool a, thing man that's cool a, a visually impaired person and a sighted person have very similar experiences because they're not looking at anything i've had i've had a couple people reach out to me and ask who are visually impaired ask what are they wearing i had one person ask what they're wearing and i said well what do you think they're wearing they're like, mm. well i picked these things i go yeah you're right they go oh so that's what's in the artwork and i go yeah we don't really have that specific of an artwork it really is whatever you see is correct mm. and one of the things i love about it is because i design very specific sound effects so, uh, you know, there's a lot of sword fighting and things like that and monsters. And I have choreography in my head of exactly what's happening to me. But if you listen and you see something different, you're 100% correct. There's no, well, what about, the, you know, well, what did you see? What did I see? Well, no, this is what happened. Um, Individual perception, yeah. Yeah, and I've worked with people who are like, no, 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 you, they have to see what I see. And I'm like, no, that's why you mm. get credit for it regardless you design something and then there i i gave a talk at one of these podcast conventions about this exact thing and i go the human mind your listener's mind is going to be a way better designer than you ever could visually set design you know choreography their mind is going to make something that's way better than anything you possibly could but you get credit for it they're like, oh, well, when this happened, when that happened, I'm like, yeah, great. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. It doesn't, it, it, as long as they're getting the story and they're engaged, that's all I really care about. That's what it's all about. It's, it's, I suppose you could relate it to, to perhaps reading a book. You know, exactly. a lot of people watch films and they say, oh, read the book. It's a lot better. And the reason it's a lot better is because people are filling in the blanks, which they didn't necessarily see in the visual on the movie, you know, so exactly yeah this is it's really a mix between a movie and it's and reading it's you can do it it's not a book on tape so it's much more you know immersive than that Mm. but um yeah it it activates that same part of the mind where you're you're like it's like i'm reading a book well that's it well you make it your own and you're you're a part of it more a part of it so as well you know but uh exactly great stuff brilliant um so, so a lot of people may or may not have, have seen you, may or may not have heard you also, yeah? So yeah. tell us, the viewers, the listeners, where might they have seen or heard you and uh, not quite realized it? 
Ah, um, so you might have seen me on an episode or two of uh, American Dad. Fantastic. Excellent uh, stuff. That's that's big over here at the moment. That is, is okay. massive in the UK at the moment. Yeah. You uh, you may have seen or heard. I mean, if you wanted the Disney cruise ship, obviously. Uh, I mean, I've, I've done a few uh, things here and there, uh, bigger movies, um, but nothing nothing of you know that you'd be like that's that guy uh, <laughs> uh video games again you might not even know but i've been in a couple video games which ones uh some of them i can't talk about because they're not out yet i understand i understand uh, but uh but yeah i mean <laughs> we well, do well that's killed that one dead shame <laughs> yeah I'm like i can't uh, um i don't know tell me about american dad then do you know offhand what episodes you were in um the one that i can tell you the most recent one there was one where stan goes to chicago and he does uh improv and stuff and i'm like a couple i i introduce him um he tries stand up and i introduce him and i'm like okay here's some <laughs> guy <laughs> awesome uh, so uh yeah i think a couple other voices in there that's the that's the one that i could i could tell you that i i off the top of my head i know it's called that because it came out relatively recently <laughs> brilliant stuff i'll certainly look out for that one it's, it's not one i've seen yet so uh yeah. I'll, I'll do some digging there and i'll look out and when i do see it i'll be to the missus and i'll be like there he is that's my um, friend shane <laughs> Yeah, I say, uh, uh, yeah, I introduced him doing stand up and then, but it's so funny. Okay, so I, I recorded that episode um, a year and a half before it came out. And when I recorded it, we didn't know if that episode was actually going to come out or not, because it was still in development. And it, you know, they, they record the voices and then they animate it later and, and all this different cartoons work different ways. Mm. Um, but they were still sort of pitching that episode. So I didn't know if it was ever going to come out. And I only found out because a buddy of mine was like, Hey, I just saw your name in the credits. I was oh, like, fantastic. What a thrill. Hey, I could go find that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it's a crazy world. Cause sometimes you don't know if things are going to come out, what it ends up being. Um, yeah. You're never quite sure. I mean, a buddy of mine, uh, my, my business partner, uh, William Holmes, he has been doing this for years and years and years. And every once in a while, someone will come up to me and goes, oh, you were in that thing. And he goes, I believe you. I don't, I don't remember or know if that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's in, Fallout, he's in Fallout 4. He plays Edward Deegan, if, if anybody knows um, that game. Uh, a lot of, an you know, been in anime. I've been in some anime games, um, mm. and stuff like that. And so you're, and sometimes you don't even know the name of the game or the show until later because it's someone tells you, <laughs> yeah. someone tells you, or like I, I was the lead in, in a cartoon that, you know, never actually got made. So you're never sure what, What's going to happen to what? It's, it's, yeah. uh, how, so, how, so, how do you feel after that, putting all the hard work in, and sometimes this it never, never comes to fruition after? Do, do you just brush it off? Is this something you've just learned to get used to, or is this still like, oh man? Yeah, I mean, you, you kind of brush it off. I don't, I don't get, you know, there are some people who get bitter and angry about, it, but some of it, you know, as a, as somebody who's also producing, you understand that there, yeah. it has nothing to do with this or that. Um, uh, you want it to go forward because you're like, oh, this would be cool that I could work on this for a number of years. That would be awesome. Mm. Um, but I, I mean, when I was a younger, I auditioned for, they were doing a reboot of, of the Power Rangers. And I auditioned for a couple characters of that, the live action. Yeah. And then all of a sudden on the internet, uh, these things started popping up being like with my name and going oh as this role is that role or, or this is the dream cast or all these things and you're uh, and you get really really excited and then you're like well it, that doesn't end up happening or the show doesn't get made or or there that's just some fan that found all the audition tapes and wanted this to be you never know 
Mm. You never know. And you get, yeah, you can get disappointed, but it's not disappointed for me because I deserve something. It's not like, oh, but I deserve, you know, they really screwed me over. It's, it's disappointing. Yeah. Like, oh, I really wanted to, you know, do yeah. that. Wouldn't, uh, it have, wouldn't it have been nice if that would have happened? That sort of thing, yeah. Nice. And that's yeah. one of the things that I think people have to, as artists, have to sort of get used to. You always hear about the rejection you have to get used to. But I think even more than that, a lot of the time you have to realize that anything that pops up that ends up going away, you didn't have to begin with. Um, and, and I mean, I've, I have lost out on really, really nice jobs because somebody else, they went with somebody else who could I literally got uh, lost a job. I, I mean, I've lost jobs because they go, you're a better actor, but they have a bigger social media following. Things like mm, that. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. I spent all my time. The old who you know cool. scenario then that comes down to, doesn't it? I mean, that's how, that's how I got some of the stuff because I happened to be in the world where I knew the casting director mm. and they're like, oh, they're letting me pick somebody. Come on in, you know. Um, or you're at the right place at the right time where it's like, oh my God, we're screwed right now. Uh, Shane, you, you're really good. So just go do this. And you're like, okay, I'm, I'm there. I can be there tomorrow. Um, it's a, it's a tricky world. And I know people that have, I know people that have lost out on really, really uh, like life-changing things because they ended up going with the producer's girlfriend, things like uh, that. Yeah. Um, that old chestnut. Or you're like, yeah, you just went with your friends. And I'm like, yeah, but I also, you know, would do that. You know, if I work and I get to a certain level, I want to work with my friends too. And mm. I know my friends have been working really, really hard. And I'm like, yeah, I, I did because I know that they can do it and I trust them. And, and we all have been working really hard together. So it's very frustrating when you, when you realize it's not all about talent. Um, but it's not personal. No, I get that. It's a bit of a double-edged sword in there. Yeah. Uh, it really can be. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so what's what's next for Shane Salt then? What's uh, what's in the pipeline? Anything you can uh, can tell us? I mean, we're we're pitching. I I would love to um, do a second season of Carcerum. We're we're sort of working in that direction. I mean, things have been written and, and outlines hmm. have been made. Um, we have Hawk, which is our a film noir. It's not film. It's an audio noir. Excellent. It's a really dark noir series that we want to make. Um, there's a couple, you know, have some TV shows, uh, some some TV shows that we're we're pitching around. Um, and I'm really enjoying connecting more with the podcasting world um, with people who are making audio series or, uh, you know, their talk shows and stuff like that. Mm. It's, it's what I've a, a lot of what I've been doing um, is just reconnecting with with the podcasting work because it's changed so much since then and i've spent so much time producing that um that uh you sort of you know lose the the human connection and of of you know like people like yourself where you found it recently relatively and you're enjoying it so much and i love seeing that i love being a part of of people um doing doing that or, or I, i've had a number of people reach out to me but hey i want to make my own audio series here's some questions i love what you do and i'm like i i'm so happy to talk to people mm. who have a passion for something and aren't just going hey i want to i'm doing a cash grab uh you know do this thing for me and i'm like yeah i can't i don't want to I'm not doing that yeah pay me no, a bunch of money and i'll do it i will do a lot of things <laughs> a lot of money, but you and me both <laughs> yeah exactly but i really do enjoy finding people who have a passion for something and uh and connecting with them brilliant man brilliant well it, it sounds like you're doing awesome things um it's, like i said we'll drop all the links in the video description and for the audio as well we'll be out on youtube probably later this evening um I, I don't know what time that will be over there what are we two, six hours behind are you eight eight hours behind yep yeah, yep yeah, there we are you're eight hours ahead of us so we're eight hours behind you Right. Okay. As you can see, I failed mathematics. <laughs> but, uh, 
Ah, uh, it's, it's it's all good, mate. It's all good. So, uh, yeah. In closing, I guess before I let you go to get on with your day in uh, sunny sunny California, are there any? Is there anything else you want to chuck in there? Any any shout outs, plugs, acknowledgements, or anything? I probably should have planned for that, but <laughs> no, no I, I, I've just enjoyed this so much. I'm glad we finally connected on it. Fantastic, my friend. Yeah, so have I, mate. It's been great to meet you. It's, it's been really nice, and I do genuinely wish you all the success in the world. You uh, too. Keep in touch. Fantastic. 100%, my man, 100%. This is great. And uh, if there's anything else coming up and you want to have a chat about it in the future, drop me a line and we'll just hook up and we'll uh, we'll do the business. Sounds good. I would. Oh, I, are you? Do you get up early? Let's see. Wait, what time would that be? I was going to say you can. I'll, I'll try to get you on our game show, but it's probably going to be we do it at 730 our time. So do the math for me. Do the math. It's about four in the morning, I think. So four in might, the morning. What uh, what day did you do that on? We do it on Fridays. Most of the time we'll do it every other Friday or something. But so would that be 4 a.m.? on a Saturday, Saturday morning for me. I can do that. I can set an yeah. alarm for that. Yeah, 100%. 100%. I will, we'll, we'll try to make that work. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll invest in some industrial strength coffee and I should be good to go. I mean, you could win, depending, we have two different game shows. You could win up to $50. Fantastic. Hey. That's totally worth it's it. Fantastic. Hey, I'm all, all about the $50, me. Fantastic. <laughs> Pencil me in, man. I'm 100% up for that. I will set an alarm. Uh, as long as there's no early starts the next day, I'm there. <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll we'll figure out how to make it work and when. You're a good man. I look forward to it. Ladies and gentlemen, listeners, viewers alike, Shane Salk, everybody, check him out. Back in the room. Woohoo! <laughs>